I do have a, a newfound respect for full-time nomads. Most people don't even know what full-time nomads uh, entail, what type of lifestyle it is. They just see it and they think they wouldn't want to do it. they all get down here and they experience it and experience the freedom and they decide that they would like to do it and who I have here today is Justin Hughes he's been a nomad for how long uh, almost a year almost a year he's full-time he lives in his van he has a motorcycle and he has a blog Yes. What, what's your blog called? Uh, SmokyDevan.com. SmokyDevan.com. So anybody who wants to check Justin out, go to SmokyDevan.com, and I will put a uh, link to it in the comments section. Who do we have here, Justin? This is Lister. He is my travel buddy. We've been through a lot together, and uh, my constant companion on this journey. And I heard that you are the real star of the show. That is true is Lister uh, how old is Lister he's seven seven okay do you like this lifestyle Lister sure you do you like your freedom don't you okay um, you've been a nomad for uh, full-time for one year yeah. um, what do you like about it Justin I like the freedom being able to go where I've never been before. I'm originally from New England. I lived there my whole life until I hit the road last year. And uh, I've always had an urge to travel, but I never had the time or the money to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the only good things to come out of the pandemic is that companies are a lot more open to remote work at this point. Right. So that's what I'm doing. So now I have the time, the money, and the flexibility to travel and uh, doing it in a van or any kind of vehicle, it's uh, I find it to be a lot less expensive than you know airline flights, hotels, car rentals, all that. That's right. We uh, we have an RV, a Class A, and it's very expensive to drive right now. We're mm -hmm. talking six miles to the gallon. Wow, yeah. And when we bought it, gas was half mm -hmm. what it is today. Right. So and hopefully it will go back down. Hopefully for all of us. <laughs> now. Um, what don't is there anything that you don't like about being being a nomad that you just don't like? I don't like waking up in the morning when it's cold. Okay. I I, I have a propane heater, okay. so I have heat, but I I don't like running it all night overnight for safety reasons. Like a Mr. Buddy or exactly okay. yep. Olympian Wave Three for me. Okay. But uh, any propane heat, I just don't like running it overnight. Mm -hmm. um, so when I wake up, it's it's cold in the morning, even in the desert, even in Arizona. It's still January when we're recording this, and it still gets cold. Mm -hmm. So um, you don't like waking up cold, and I bet you just about everybody shares that sentiment. <laughs> I'll bet. Um, what, now, when you think about the future, Justin, do you try to, do you think about maybe exiting this lifestyle sometime or do you just take it one day at a time or how what do you do well i have a vague sort of plan for this year at least um, i'm spending the winter here in quartzite um, the one corner of the country i have not been to on this journey yet is the pacific northwest so once it warms up in the spring that's where i'm going to see it from there my dream or part of my dream trip my ultimate dream trip has been to go across the U.S., up to Canada, and then across Canada. I accomplished across the USA this year, so yay, and I haven't given up on that dream. I'm on pause. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. all it is. But uh, if the borders open and remains open and everything works out fine, I'd like to go do that cross Canada trip. Mm -hmm then uh, duck back into New England, visit some old friends, because that's where I'm originally from. Sounds good. And then uh, make my way back to Quartzsite for next winter. Now, if the border closes up at some point, either I can't get in or it closes partway across, that's going to change everything. But 
the way I try to do it is I, I do a certain amount of basic planning, but I also leave myself open to opportunities that may come up along the way or problems like, oh look, I'm halfway through Alberta and they're closing the border in two days. I gotta figure out how to get back across, things right. like that. Right. So uh, a little bit of planning, but also open to changes, whether they're changes I choose to make or, uh, or changes that are forced upon me. Okay. Um, now, what about family, Justin? Do you have any family that, like, back in New England that you you haven't seen for a long time or been in touch with? How do you handle that? Yeah, my mom and dad live in New Hampshire. New Hampshire, okay. Yeah. And uh, I did see them, actually, for a couple of days. They parked me in their backyard before I set off out west. Okay. Um, we have haven't spent a lot of time together in recent years anyway pretty much keep in touch by email um, they like reading my blog which is great to hear so Good. they pretty much keep up with my adventures that way I may tell them a few things that are not for completely public consumption mm -hmm. stuff like that um, or just things that we all want to per we all have a personal life of course or just things that will interest them but the average viewer or reader just isn't going to care about which is fine. I'll say that I appreciate you opening yourself and your life up to let me come and do this and to see your rig and not everybody will do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to share it. You know, I've, uh, I've been doing this less than a year, but I've learned a lot in a very short time because I've had to. So uh, Right. I'm happy Did you know anything at all about this type of life when you set out? A little bit. Um, Probably about five years ago, I stumbled across Bob Wells' videos. Right. How so many of us. The like guru. Of course. Yeah. And um, I was originally thinking of it as a way out of an unhappy marriage. I didn't take that route, but uh, the idea of traveling in a van always stuck in my head. And uh, then when we finally uh, sold our house and were truly separated, um, the idea came back, and now mm. that I didn't have a house that would suck all my money away, mm. I saved up and I bought my first van, which was not this one. This is my second. Um, I bought a, just a basic conversion van. I did a no-build build in it, mm. just threw in a bed, and a table, and a cooler, and a few things, and uh, made a weekender out of it. And um, I enjoyed that enough. Um, I had a girlfriend by that point, and uh, she encouraged me to uh, take a whole week and really get the full experience. Okay. And so I did, and I absolutely loved it. So then it got to a point where uh, various bits and pieces of my old life were falling apart. The, uh, you know, the house was gone, the marriage was gone, obviously. Um, I got laid off from a really good job with people I really enjoyed working with, but mm -hmm. That was gone. There was very little holding me to New England anymore. Mm -hmm. Pretty much all that was holding me there was my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's an adventurous type. She's hitchhiked across the country before. She said she'd come with me. So we sold the unreliable old Dodge and uh, bought this to turn into the, uh, the full-time home on wheels for the two of us. Front of a van, pretty basic. I have a swivel seat that serves as my recliner. Uh, did it swivel when you bought it? It did not. You do changed it. I changed it. Good there, job. This used to be a wheelchair van. So okay. there's an enormous wheelchair lift filling this entire doorway. So okay. I got that taken out. Okay. Got the swivel seat in there. Um, obviously this is where the, this is the cat area between the That's seats. That's Lister's area. As well as my ham radio station there. Okay. So I have that. Uh, moving back, this storage compartment here was part of the wheelchair van conversion. So I keep, uh, extra clothes, bedding, lightweight items up there. Okay, and you have the Reflectix to help with the heat? Yes, Or exactly. the cold? Yep, I have. Or the, either one. For, yeah. for either, yeah. They're yeah. black on one side, which I can put out for stealth. That's how I have it set up now. Not that I need to be stealthy. Right. And silver on the other to either reflect the sun out or keep the heat in. With, with this van life growing, the people starting to be more acceptive of, of, of people uh, just sleeping in their parking lots they right. they used to really really frown on it but now they seem to accept it more mm -hmm. yeah. now how many square feet do you think you have in here oh that is an excellent question I don't have an answer for that. It's a long van. It's a Ford E250 uh, extended van. Okay. So whatever the square footage for that is. Plus it has the high top from the wheelchair van conversion. 
Okay. So I still can't stand up straight in it, but uh, you know, it, it's enough that I can at least walk back and forth instead okay. of having to shuffle around on my knees. And this is your heater? Yep. Wave 3? Olympian Wave 3, yes. Okay. Um, I've got carbon monoxide and smoke detectors there. Right. Um, my van life journey began earlier than planned because uh, we were halfway through building the van and then we had an apartment fire. And a, uh, a smoke detector that actually worked, the only one in the building, is what saved my life. Oh. So, uh, I'm very big on having smoke detectors that work. <laughs> yeah. 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 So there's that. So and you have a double bed, queen bed? Uh, it's a full-size bed. Full-size bed. We, uh, my now ex and I designed it for two. It okay. is just me now, so it is bigger than I would make it if I was building this van today. Mm -hmm. But I'd have to completely rebuild everything inside in order to change that. So uh, it works. I'm just going with it. Plus, I got a lot of storage underneath. My batteries, my electrical systems under here. A lot of just regular storage so it's and a good thing that way i notice that you have parked within short walking distance to restrooms also so true. That, that's a good idea although i do have a nature's head composting toilet as well wow uh, yeah my ex insisted on that and to her credit she used it she maintained it she did a really good job with it for me it's more like a an expensive pee bottle the way yeah. I yeah but i already yeah. own it so yeah. we'll just keep using it that's the advantage I have over my wife is being able to just, if I need to go to the restroom, I just go outside exactly. if I need to. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this is a, a uh, little water area here. Do you have? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have uh, fresh and gray water underneath. And that's a pump? Dishes. Is that a pump? Yeah, this is a uh, hand pump. Takes a little bit of priming. Okay. And then there we go. No there electricity. There goes your sponge bass. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And electricity, nice and simple. And this is Lister's bed. This, yep. This is my uh, refrigerant freezer. It's uh, it's an Alpa Cool, dual zone. Okay. But um, he started lying down on top of it all, all the time. So, well, this uh, is extra insulation right here that we And it is extra it insulation. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I got the cushion for that, but mostly so that he could claim the spot as his own. Are you set up for solar? I am. I have 350 watts of solar on the roof. Okay. Um, one neat thing about it having been a wheelchair van is uh, the wheelchair lift was wired with really thick gauge wiring. Oh, which yeah. Which then I adapted to charge my house batteries off the alternator as well as with the solar. Okay. And I can also plug in shore power. I have a, a 10 amp charger under the bed that will just charge the batteries right. that way. So three way right. charging. Okay. Very good. Yep. So is there anything that you would like to say to somebody that may be thinking about becoming a nomad that would help them? Give it a try. In whatever vehicle you have right now, it doesn't have to be a van. Um, you know, it can just be your car, whatever. Um, just grab what you think you're going to need. Go out somewhere not far from home because, you know, it might not work. But then again, it might work. Right. Or you might go camping and realize, huh, that was really cold. I'm going to need a heater for this. But other than that, it was wonderful. <laughs> so give it a try. See how you like it. And then um, gain the experience. Keep doing it so that if you decide to pursue it full time to build a rig like this, you can decide where you want things to be and what you want to have on board because your needs are probably different than mine so right. copying my build isn't necessarily the right choice for you okay and you have a, a motorcycle i do yes that's how you get around when you aren't yes you don't have to take your van and break camp every time you go somewhere exactly can we step out and get some video of Let's it do anything that. else you want to show me in here that's that's really about it. And you ha do you have a garage area in the back that you can open up the back doors and get to underneath your bed? Not so much a garage area. That's where the uh, composted toilet and the litter box are. Oh, okay. This, the awning is attached here. You yeah, can it's put it away. To the top of the doorway. Okay. It just rolls up. So you just basically roll up, open everything up, and you've got a camp. Pretty much. This is nice. This is for my internet here in Port Site. There is a local company called Fastnet that has their own independent set of towers. Okay. And they actually deliver 
good, reliable, fast internet, which is a rare commodity. We here. tried we tried camping. We're at Dome Rock. Yeah. I think I might have told you that, but we tried camping at uh, out here, LTVA South. We was up in the front, mm -hmm. and we our TV would just we couldn't watch anything. It would it would start and then it would just start buffering, mm -hmm. start start buffering. So I told we ended up going down to Imperial Dam and spent about three weeks down there. I want to visit there. Yeah, you should visit there, know, Justin. Yeah, yeah. For sure. yeah. Yeah. I mean, since I work online, I absolutely need internet or I, I can't be here. Right. So, I'm gonna back up a little bit and try to get out of the wind. So, uh, so yeah, I got fast net going for that. My runabout. This is a Kawasaki KLR650. Okay. Uh, it's a dual sport motorcycle, so both on road and off road. That's what CVK's got. Okay. KLR, I yeah. think a 650. Yeah. Wonderful. Well. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's got good taste. Yep. So, and you carry it on the back here. Yeah. This okay. Is a, uh, a Black Widow carrier. Um, well, Smokey Devan, thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure.